During his ten years at the top, Richard Beckinsale was every girl's dream date and every boy's ideal best mate. I watched his programs obsessively as a little kid. Um, I think after he died, you know, it was that thing of thinking, oh my God, I didn't, you know, you're, that, that thing of wanting sort of to have the flavour of the person so much. Um, and being in this slightly weird position of having tons of episodes of, of stuff of him and watching it in order to get some clue in a funny way, you know. Born in 1947, Richard Beckinsale was a Nottingham boy who failed to get to grammar school and was written off by his teachers. While you're getting your breath back, may I try to take it away again? <laughs> By saying comedy star Richard Beckinsale tonight, this is your life. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I will call out to you and the cast that I love your wife and all back at the theaters with a few more surprises. <laughs> I swore blind I'd never fall for this. <laughs> Leaving school at 16, Richard got the sack from every job he tried. His only real ambition was to act. I told him, oh, Rick, it's a very dicey profession. You'll be out of work probably more than in, and you must have a second string to your bow even if it's hairdressing or something like that. So I think he went to night school to start with and got his English and art, the two easier ones I think it was, and then went to Clarendon College and from Clarendon he went to RADA and I, he then, I think he knew he'd found what he wanted to do. When he, when he was on Coronation Street, um, he was on for about two or three minutes, but everybody was so excited, and he had long hair, and, and, and I remember him saying that under this policeman's helmet, he had to wear a hairnet, because his hair was long. Now then, Mrs. Sharples. Aye, well, we can't have this, Mrs. Sharples. You're in breach of all the bylaws. Hey, this young lad says we're breaching his bylaws. <laughs> no, 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 what I'm pointing out is that you can't do it, and that's that. Nobody can sit in the road disrupting traffic on... I'm one at Queen's Highways. All you saw was Richard carting off Ina Sharples, but it was really quite something then. It was quite exciting. Oh, Ina. Are you going that way? Yeah. Uh, no, not specially. You're going that? Well, yeah. Well, well, I, well, I, well, I was sort of... I was going to the pictures. I was. Which? Which were you? Any. I was. <laughs> He had this lovely kind of um, slow delivery and very amazingly kind of relaxed um, attitude in front of the camera, and in fact, in life, that made him um, able to portray that innocence that Geoffrey had. A ring on my finger. A, a ring on my finger. All you ever talked about were rings on fingers. If a mate of mine asked me to give him a ring, I'd say, right, what's your finger? <laughs> Jeffrey P. Scrimgeour, thank you. What was Percy Phil's ambition in life? To send my knickers to Oxfam? <laughs> Certainly the men in the audience so identified with the character of Jeffrey um, that uh, their response was, was, was wonderful. How long have we been going out together? Since the day after Jammy Milan the Unlucky United <laughs> on aggregate to win the European Cup. And how long is that in a normal human calendar? 68-69 season. City won the cup, Derby won promotion, and somehow Leeds managed to struggle up to league championship. <laughs> the Critics' Award is for the best newcomer, and his name, Richard Beckinsale. I think he was astonished, actually. I mean, he loved it. He did enjoy it tremendously. I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> 
was excited because he was in this posh hotel that had got a phone in the loo. Lovers was a massive hit, and Richard became famous in his role as an innocent in love. Few fans knew the more complex reality. Age 17, he had fallen in love with a Nottingham girl, and they had a baby, Samantha. The extraordinary thing about rising down from porridge was that within the space of half an hour of each other, they went out on the same night. Ah, Richard. Hello, Fletch. Have you thought any more about the room? <laughs> Single soul is his by rights, mine. The problem of having done porridge first was that he had to have his hair cut, admittedly not that short, but nevertheless sh short enough uh, for, for someone who was in prison. Well, I presume I'm on the bottom bunk life. I mean, top bunk status in the nick. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, you're on the bottom bunk, yeah. And um, he was supposed to be this rather beatnik uh, character in, um, in Rising Down. Ah, oh, so that's it. It's my hair, is it? Well, let me tell you, Jesus Christ had long hair. Now, that's enough of that. What? Don't you go comparing yourself with him. You show a bit of respect. But it's true, he did have long hair. He didn't have a hair dry, though, did he? <laughs> yeah, but, well, look, I haven't trifled with Miss Jones's feelings. I haven't trifled with anybody's feelings. Well, what, 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 you, you mean there's never been any coloured lights? No, see, crashing up against the rocks? Oh, <laughs> never, never, never. You're, you're, you're a member of the permissive society. You're supposed to know where the erogenous regions are. <laughs> I know where the Himalayas are, but I've never been up them. <laughs> Whoever came into contact with him was immediately put at ease. Um, uh, uh, and that was really vital in, in Rising Down. And Len loved him. Len really loved Richard. He thought he, thought he was wonderful. <laughs> The man in black. So whatever mood Len was in, Richard would come in and his mood would change. And it was great. Helpful for everybody. I Leonard, here's your yeah. chance to tell us what you really think of Richard. Yes, he came dressed, as he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there'll, be, there'll be plenty of other people who can be quite funny about Richard, but I just want to say two things about him. One is that uh, he has a unique talent and he is the most generous person not in financial terms. <laughs> <only. laughs> Let me finish. Not in financial terms only, but he is the one of the most generous people in spirit I have ever met. When you're a supporting actor, you support the leading man. You you feed him the lines. But in this case, it wasn't like that. We were, when we got on the set, we were um, equals. We, it wasn't a sub supporting role. Did you? I think it's your narrow solid. Well, look, you've injured both my feet one at a time, Bobba. I didn't mean to. Well, get in the bed, will you, son? I have you undressed yet. Look, just get in the bed till I get in the bed. You can get out and get undressed to get back in the bed, can't you? Cut <laughs> <laughs> the road! Cut the road! Huh? I suppose butter wouldn't melt in your mouth. Yeah, that's a good idea. How much could you get in your mouth? <laughs> Don't make waves, Fletcher. All right, Bobba. Fruit and nut. Plain. <laughs> Plain chocolate. <laughs> it was shot in front of an audience. They, they used to love him, of course. Uh, he was, he didn't say much to them. He, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't sort of, I suppose he wasn't confident, I don't know. I used to be talking to them all the time, uh, in between, and uh, making him laugh, and he would occasionally shout back, you know. When we were in between scenes, when you have to wait, you have to stop and uh, reset something. 